and welcome to our latest Wovo Rates Roundtable. We started doing these, and uh, two years ago. Yeah, a little over two years. And I we've think. done, uh, you know, one approximately every other month or so. Uh, they've they've proven to be very valuable. We're glad today to be joined by a wow, an August group of experts, and I'm going to let you go ahead and uh, introduce them. Yes, thank you. So we have with us today, and thank you guys so much for joining us, uh, taking time out of your busy day. We have uh, Cliff Zellman, who is the Director of Audio Production and Client Creative Services for Radio Vision, a turnkey automotive advertising agency that's out of Dallas, Texas. He is also the owner of Amazing Demos and founder of the Dallas Voice Acting Meetup Group, which has been active since 2005. He's on the Tech Standards Committee for Wobo and a popular national speaker and Emmy Award winning or Emmy winning audio engineer. Originally from my hometown, LA, living in Dallas since 1995. Thanks so much, Cliff, for being here. Oh, thank you so much. And, and of course, as soon as my mic goes on, my phone goes, I'm thrilled to be here. What a great group. I'm going to turn off my phone. <laughs> there you <Carry> go. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Dan Friedman, who is uh, author of Sound Advice, Sound Advice, excuse me, voiceover from an audio engineer's perspective. He's an accomplished engineer, producer, director, author, and voiceover coach, and a talent who has been heard on hundreds of local and regional television and radio campaigns. Thanks, Dan, for joining us today. Good Glad to see to you. Glad to be here. Good to see you, too, and everybody here. We also have Eric Romanowski of Ear Blowing Audio Productions, who offers elite voiceover demo production and specializes in radio imaging, promo, affiliate, commercial, and narration demos. Thanks so much, Eric. Yeah, thank you. We've also got the lovely Elaine Clark, who is owner and founder of Voice One in San Francisco, author of the first voiceover training book, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, and creator of the voice and diction apps, Activate Your Voice and Finding Melody in Your Voice. Hey, Elaine. Hi, I'm happy to be here. We also have Gabby Nistico, voiceover actress, coach, and author, and co-host along with me of the VO Boss podcast and creator of the site, say no to cheapvo.com. Hey, Gab. And we, last but certainly not least, we have Harry Dunn, who is an LA-based network promo producer and voiceover coach. Harry, thanks so much for joining us. It is my pleasure. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited to get this started, uh, all about demos and, and production, and I'm going to turn it over to Dave for the question. Right. Well, usually these rates roundtables uh, involve uh, the discussion of rates for voice talent. What should you charge for your work? So we're kind of turning this on its ear for this session and, and asking the question, what should voiceover talent reasonably expect to pay for uh, voiceover coaching or voiceover demo production? And I want to start by just saying I've noticed a lot of people getting into coaching these days. And so I'd like to just put it out there that unless you really enjoy coaching, uh, you probably shouldn't be coaching. I see a lot of people augmenting their sagging careers by doing coaching, and I'm not sure they really enjoy coaching or want to do it. They just do it because they're, they're noticing a decrease in revenue. Uh, Elaine, what do you think? You've been coaching for a long time. Should people be into coaching if they don't really enjoy it? I think you need to have a calling for it. I mean, I, I got into voiceovers in 1980, and then at that point, there were only 50 people doing voiceovers in San Francisco. 50. So it was really hard to break in. And then when I broke in, people kept asking me, how did you do it? How did you do it? So, so then I thought I got tired of meeting people by the fountain in Embarcadero Center, just all <laughs> different things. I thought, well, I'll just open up a, a business. And that was really funny because then I thought I had it going for a while. I'll just write a book so people will leave me alone. Then more people started asking me. Stuff. <laughs> but I also, besides, you know, I was a theater major in college and I worked at a campus radio station for a while. But I, I also come from a long line of educators. I also got a degree in education. So it was something that's in my blood. It's my family's blood. It's something I have to do. Yeah. And, uh, and getting the curriculum and everything together. So I've, I started Voice One in 1986. So it's been going on for a long time. So yeah. it's something that I've trained so many people. It's kind of fun going to different conferences and seeing so many of my students at various stages of the game and a lot of them teaching. You know, they, yeah. they have gotten into it 20 years or so later. So, Gabby, what do you think? Should, should people be out there coaching uh, unless they really have a heart for it? No. I, I mean, I think it's not even just having a heart for it. I think it's understanding that it not only is very demanding, but your students will challenge the hell out of you. And we've, mm. we've all seen that. We've all experienced that. 
your heart can be in the right place, but the skills needed and the um, expectation that the industry is going to put on you to have someone to have a product to have a name in a particular genre as a coach it is intense yeah and yeah eric uh, you've started doing demos uh how long have you been at this now uh since 04. wow okay so let's say you get a call from a um a voiceover talent you've never heard of before what yeah. is how does the call go on, on your phone what what do you say to him do you qualify him as a talent before you start doing a demo for him give me an idea of what the uh, the call would be like yeah no I, I just had that happen the first thing I want to hear is a demo or examples of work so I can gauge where they're at I'm not just gonna say sure I'll do a demo for you you yeah. know what like Dan and I have had this conversation many a times like I am not jumping into any demos with someone who's not ready not only does it reflect poorly on them, but it's going to reflect poorly on me as well. Um, How do you so, tell if they're ready? What, 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 are you, what are you looking for? What are you listening for? Uh, you know, someone that doesn't sound like they're reading mm-hmm. is one of the biggest things that I hear from, from, from someone that's just getting into it. It's like they sound like a robot. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, those are one, that's, that's a, a dead giveaway right away. Yeah. Um, you know, for some, something like when I do imaging, there's just certain techniques that, um, are very unique to imaging that I listen for, uh, just as an example. I saw you nodding there, Harry. You agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Last year, I ended up doing a demo for someone I thought was ready, and then I got into the session, and I realized, oh, oh, I've, I've made a mistake. And I, so I'm, I, I was giving line reads. I was doing all that stuff, and I just made a vow at that point, never again. It's mm-hmm. just it's not going to help them. I mean, here's the Here's the thing. Here's the thing I'd like to say about demos is, uh, is this. If, you are, if, a, if a voiceover talent asks, am I ready for a demo, you're asking the wrong question, okay? Because Eric, me, Chuck, you know, we can all make you sound good on a demo. You know, we can, we can sit there and, and do a lot of pizzazz with the, uh, with the audio design, get great music, get line reads, you know, but that's the wrong question. Because what's going to happen is you come up with a killer demo, and let's just pick uh, an age. Let's just take Heather from Atlas, okay? So then you go to Heather, and you and I and I'll say, hey, I just uh, I just cut this guy's demo. What do you think? And she and she, the first question she asks me every time is, it good because he's good, or good because you made him good? Okay, because mm. she's on to me now. So and then she'll send him twenty-seven pieces of copy, literally like that many, twenty-seven pieces of copy. Go read these, and get them back. They want to hear what they sound like. So. And if you just completely suck on those 27 reads, she knows it's just a, 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 a demo that's made you sound better than you really are. So yeah. I said that's the wrong question. Here's the right question. The right question is, are you ready for what comes after a demo? Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Because the point of a demo is to get you a good agent, and a good agent will get you work in that order. So you have yeah. to be able to self do to navigate the treacherous waters known as the self-directed audition. Yep. And, uh, and if you can't do that, then you're just not ready for a demo. Great point, uh, Harry. Let me ask Cliff something because I've worked with Cliff on a demo, and and what I noticed about Cliff is that he not only produces a demo, but he really directs you well. So let me ask uh, Cliff: Is that something you include in the price of your uh, demo production? Is I'm going to direct you as well? Muted. Oh yeah, Cliff, right. you're muted. There we go. How's that? Good. Better. Okay. It's, it's his first day. Directing is a major part of uh, the demo process because I think that directing is a major part of voiceover. Uh, what I'm most concerned with when people come to me to, for a demo, and, and you all know me, and I really turn down about 70% of the people that want to do demos with me. But I, what I do is, is um, the initial consultation is very short because it's not really important to me to get all the information up front. What I'll do, like, um, like Harry said, is I'll send them scripts. And then I'll hear what they do, hear their strengths, hear their weaknesses. And uh, if additional coaching is needed, depending upon where the deficiencies are, I will then, you know, uh, suggest a coach for them. But to me, really a demo, more than anything, is about reproducibility and being able to perform after the demo is done. Your demo is really a promise, you know, and you're handing your file, you're handing your CD, whatever it is. I'm an old guy, so CD. <laughs> um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm saying to the client, potential client, potential agent, agency, I am going to be as good, I promise you, as good or better 
than what you're going to hear on this demo. Mm. So that's really one of the reasons that I almost insist that demos that I do are, are cut from the voice talent's home because I could take you into Dallas Sound Labs. I can put you in front of a $8,000 Telefunken microphone with a rack of Babylons in a perfectly tuned room. Then you go home. You know, I receive easily 10 demos a week unsolicited, and I listen to them, and I'll hire from those demos. So a big part of my job and what I do with Radio Vision is hiring voice talent. So I'll get a demo. Wow, sounds great. Blew my mind. Amazing. Terrific. I'll send a – I won't call – the, the talent. I'll send them a script. Thank you very much for submitting your demo. Please read this for me for consideration. And I'll know instantly if the demo was, you know, something that's really unrealistic. So being able to be reproducible to me is the most important thing. And one more thing, let me throw in there. I think that the best coaches come from a directorial background and not necessarily a, a voiceover uh, background. Yeah, uh, I agree. I did. Thousands and thousands of voice talent from demos to albums to records to animation and the chops you pick up uh, Seeing what works seeing what the light bulb that goes on in the voice talent's head is is really You know what you learn from so uh, a directorial background. I believe is extremely important mm -hmm. And you're, you're a coach uh, when you get a call from someone you really don't know and they say gosh Ann, could you coach me? How does the conversation go? <laughs> well, usually uh, I will have a, a an in-depth conversation about what their goals are yeah. to find out, you know, what they're looking to do. And, you know, if they're really green or really new, a lot of times they, they do character voices or they want to, you know, they have the old, they don't have a very, uh, they don't have a very in-depth knowledge of the voiceover industry as a whole. And the very first thing I will tell them is how hard it is and how very difficult it is to get work these days and that you really, it has, it's so much more than just being in your studio and having yeah. a, a good voice and as a matter of fact I, I actually worked with a, a student today he's not really even a student but it was the CEO of a company that was producing his own commercial and I ran into a lot of issues there because he wanted it to sound natural and conversational but you know, literally, he didn't want to spend the time to get there. And then mm -hmm. he said, can I hire somebody to do this for me? And I said, <laughs> sure. Where would you like this commercial to run? And he, you know, he's like, well, you know, CNN and, you know, and Sports Channel. And he, he has the money to do that. And honestly, I said, well, here's what it's probably going to cost you. And he went, oh. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting. I have, to be, I have to be very real because yeah. not only is it I'm, I'm – I'm working with somebody who might potentially like have a commercial out there that, you know, said, Oh, I worked with Ann. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's their product is also my product. So mm -hmm. I am on the level and fortunately I am, you know, I'm, I'm busy. So it allows me to just be a little bit, you know, it, it's okay. You know, I'm, I can be more forthright and more honest because and not that I wouldn't be less honest, but it's, it makes it easier for me because I always like right. to, you know, yeah. um, I like to help people achieve their goals. Right. Uh, save the best for last. Dan Friedman, yeah. same question for you. You get a call from somebody you really don't know. Uh, how does the conversation go on the phone if you're qualifying them as a coach or a demo producer? Yeah, well, I definitely want to know what their goals are. Um, I am very upfront with them and just how competitive this business is um, and how difficult it is to really succeed. And I also explain to them, you know, if you are uh, new to this business and you've never done this before, then you have to consider that this is like going into any trade, um, which often takes, you know, two years of training. Uh, you consider it like junior college, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I really do uh, say that, you know, you can't expect to work uh, really for two years. If you do, that would be great. But if you, you have to expect that it will take two years of practicing, which is where most uh, students honestly fall short. Um, I can give them the tools. I can tell them how to interpret copy and I can explain to them and direct them all day long. But if they're not doing the work on their own, that is where most students fall short is that they don't do the work on their own because, you know, I, I can 
tell them about different points of copy and ways to emphasize words and all kinds of, you know, different variations uh, of things and interpretations and attitudes and intent and all of those things. And I can explain that to them, but if they don't do the homework on their own mm. um, and really spend an hour or two hours a day, just like all of us who are professionals are doing every day, um, if they're not at least that committed, uh, then how could they ever expect to work? So I'm really, I'm pretty upfront about that. Um, and honestly, that is where I do find that most students fall short is that they just don't do the homework um, because they just think that they can make money, um, yeah. whereas they're not putting in the time. Um, yep. And obviously, for people who are a little experienced, uh, you know, then it's a little bit different conversation. Um, so maybe somebody came from uh, a broadcast background or in radio or something. So they have a certain set of skills that are helpful but they aren't necessarily uh, all appropriate to voiceover. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a real strong acting background, then you also have a set of skills that are appropriate, but again, not all the skills that you need to really be effective in voiceover. So, you know, it's kind of a different conversation based on their experience and what they're bringing to the table. But generally speaking, you know, there's no nothing to uh, you know. We we can't even uh, you know sugarcoat it in any way. It's a tough business. It's very competitive, and we yep. uh, owe it to everybody to be very straightforward mm -hmm. and honest with them about that. So I want to get to the uh, question of rates for coaching and for demos, and and I don't want to put anybody on the spot. So I'm going to ask for a spectrum of what you think uh, it should cost. And and you know I don't coach. I'm the only guy here in this group of eight that doesn't coach. I, I mentor a lot of people, and I often get the question, "Can't I just do my own demo?" And I always tell them, "No, no, you're you're just too close to it. You can't be objective. You need a professional." So um, I've seen demo production quotes from. $500 to $2,500. Eric, what do you think the spectrum should be? And how would you, how would you adjust it up or down according to the person who approaches you? I don't, I don't really adjust it <clears throat> according to the person. I adjust it more accordingly to the actual demo. You know, like for instance, like a promo demo is going to take longer than an imaging demo. You know, you okay. Gotta, the sound bite. So it's more of a time thing for me than the experience. I mean, they're all getting the same quality demo. Well, so do you bill by the hour then? What's that? Do you bill by the hour? It, it technically is. If you, I mean, you could technically break it down that way. Um, but they're generally going to take the same amount of time, you know, give or take. Um, you know, certainly coaching is additional to these rates that we're discussing. But that I kind of see that as a, as a, uh, a separate fee. You so for that. a commercial demo, what, what do you think a spectrum should be for, for out the door? Uh, so I'm the first one that we put on the spot. Um, <laughs> just, just a spectrum. You know, I'm not saying yeah, this is what you charge. I'm no, saying no, this I, is I what get it, I get it. Um, I would say uh, spectrum 15 to two grand. Yep. Okay. Is fair. For, for a demo. Yeah. Okay. For one demo. Um, there are more expensive demos and, and certainly if people want to pay that rate, that's totally, people can charge whatever they want. Yeah. I don't know someone that charges double that and that's fine. Um, you, you know, I'm not at that point in my career where I can do that. I have mouths to feed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yep. but, but I still think it's a very fair price for yep. the, uh, the product. Well, this is why we're trying to, you just want to yeah. get this out there. Oh, so, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, Elaine, I'll jump in there to help Eric. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Um, so I, I actually do a uh, base uh, demo production on kind of an hourly scale okay. uh, based on what my hourly studio rate is with an eight hour minimum, because assuming that a commercial demo, which is where I specialize, um, you know, I know that it's going to take me a full day to pretty much get all the components together um, to direct the talent and get the recording. Um, and so I know that it will take at least that much. Um, so that's how I base my prices on at least an eight hour day minimum. Um, and then if it goes beyond that, then I'm very upfront with the client about uh, that possibility. Okay. So for an eight hour day commercial demo, what's the spectrum you think would be reasonable for a voice actor to, to pay? Yeah, I think 1200 to 2000. Um, yep is re okay. very reasonable. That would be 150 an hour at eight hours um, would bring it 1200. And I'm not into math or anything, but I think that's <laughs> <laughs> now, now Dan, are you talking, you're just talking demo production. Are you talking about gathering copy and stuff too? Are you including that in the price? 
Uh, no, I'm not included. I'm uh, just, that's the straight up just production recording okay. and putting it all together. Okay. Okay. And that's a great question I want to bring up later, but I want to get through this round of just quotes. And in Elaine, do you, you don't do demo production? Oh yeah, I do. Lots. Oh, you do. I've done okay. thousands so, and thousands of demos. So same question. 30. I'm sorry. I, I, I should have <laughs> known that. So same question yeah, for okay. you. What, what would you say is a decent spectrum, a reasonable spectrum for a voice actor to pay these days for a demo production out the door? I think a, a thousand to fifteen hundred, but I know a lot of people charge more than that. But I, I'm coming from a unique perspective because I'm taking someone from soup to nuts. I mean, I'm taking them from beginner to all the way to advanced. We have three different core curriculums of commercial narration and character. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've directed like, over 50 video games. I've worked on like over 200 toys. So I know a lot of the character stuff that's out there, worked on a couple anime series. And then, then as, as far as commercials, done hundreds of thousands maybe as far as narration. So, and also I, ca I cast and I direct and I engineer. So I'm coming from all different perspectives. So when people have gone through my whole program, I'm not gonna be on the higher end of the demo because they've already invested and I know oh, I where see. they are and we have we have um, a language that we speak but I take I bring them in the studio so that they can we write the copy together and then we then we uh, record it and edit it and I have I have them watch every single bit of it so they stay in the studio with me hmm. so they can see what they did wrong what they could improve on go back in the studio and do that again so it's a huge learning curve for them the way yep. I do it did, and Harry, you're the you're in the LA milieu there and it's a, it's kind of a different cat uh, what, what do you think is a reasonable uh, charge for a, a commercial demo production out the door? Well, by the way, the top end is $4,000. I believe Maurice charges $4,000 for her demos. So, so it's $500 to $4,000. Uh, okay. I'll just tell you flat out, I charge $2,500. I am a very specific, I do network promo, sports promo, affiliate promo, and trailer demos. And the reason I charge so much is because I hire a high-end audio engineer. I love the belief that if the demo doesn't sound like these spots aired on the network, then it's a failed demo. Okay. Mm, now, mm. believe it or not, I've done demos for two people in this conversation, you, Dave, and you, Dan. So uh, that was back when I was cheap at 1500 back in 2015. <laughs> I got in at the low, <laughs> low end. Okay. And Dan got in when the going was good. But listen, we did this great thing with Dan. We did this thing from Justified, and a month later, he was signed at Atlas. So – you know, a great promo demo does wonders, you know, it just does wonders. So I, I pay my guy a lot of money, uh, my audio engineer, because I would yeah. rather make less and have it be kick-ass than make more and have it be half-ass. Yep. So, um, that, but the, the promo demos are a very specific thing. Commercial demos are much higher demand. Uh, promo demos, that's the upper echelon of the VO community. It really is promo. You know, you don't sit there and start – a VO career go, I want to go into promo. That's when you've been working for years and years, you set up yourself yeah. commercially and you've got great campaigns and then you sort of upgrade to promo. You don't hit the ground running with promo. Right. Dave, I think, I think one thing to, to kind of mention too is like, it sounds like, you know, Elaine is kind of talking, Elaine, you're talking more just actual production. You, you've already, they've already invested separately into coaching, right? Yeah. You know, or I'm sorry, like, you know, gathering of copy, the directing and stuff like that. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, well, I take it from beginning. I mean, the, uh, it's a different, I don't charge the production that to include the time to write the copy. Right. So they're doing some, they also might take a class or two to, to prep for the demo that's yeah. very specifically oriented that way. So stuff that where you guys are sending them off to a coach or whatever, I'm already <laughs> providing. So I feel like they're, they're already giving me a certain amount of uh, of income and I don't I don't feel like I should then charge more because I already know them and we are getting a um, You know, they've already had an investment that I'm very aware of right. so but that's what we but I do the the music and sound design because I do it for clients I mean, you know, you know, yeah. so whether it's a, a demo or it's for, for a commercial I'm doing the same thing and you, have to, you have to think you have to keep music licensing in mind as well, you know, like absolutely if I can. Solid music is yes. I mean, you can hear a, a a royalty free demo and you could also hear something that could possibly air on ESPN. I mean, they're mm -hmm. drastically hear the difference. Yep. So one thing to keep in mind with rates is some people don't include copy, you know, mm. uh, my rates include copy, you know, so that that's kind of, you know, yep. it, it, it all depends on, on what your rate includes. So Gabby, uh, let's, let's get to you. What do you think is a reasonable uh, rate, a spectrum of cost for a commercial demo? I've always believed that geography plays a huge role because it's like everything else. The location of the demo producer, the location of the creator has their cost of living to take into consideration. 
Um, so it's going to vary. LA, New York, Chicago, it has always yeah. made sense to me that those demos cost more. Um, so uh, less prevalent areas, I guess you could say, um, myself being in North Carolina, same as Dan, um, I've always said, you know what, I can afford to be a little bit cheaper if only because I don't have the same overhead. And my Great Pyrenees is desperately trying to get in on this conversation. <laughs> she, she is just wanting to be on this. Um, but, at, you know, I, I'd still say that I think um, in and around $1,000 is, is going to be the minimum. And um, I think upwards of that, location again hugely important and then it's it's about what exactly that demo includes um i'm like eric i include everything in the creation of a demo so copy is a factor there it's being supplied mm -hmm. the, the direction in studio all of the post everything is all inclusive um if you're not supplying a certain segment of that then yeah it's going to affect the price some sure um, so, but I think, I think the cap though, I feel 2,500 is, is a, is a pretty good top out point. I know there are people that do charge more, but I, it, it, you know, I, I do kind of at that point question and say, what exactly is being paid for? Yeah. Uh, Cliff, I, I know that you write your own copy for your, uh, your, your demo candidates. Uh, what, what would you say is a good spectrum? Well, it, Gabby made a great point. Uh, I believe a lot of it has to do with overhead. And there are people that have to lease a, a space, lease a studio. They often have leases for the equipment that they've purchased. They have secretaries. They got the, the sparklets guy that comes once a week. So there's all this overhead. Um, I have a set rate for my demos and I don't charge by the hour. I charge by the project. And I think that really came from my roots as a rock and roll engineer and bidding projects to <laughs> and say, I will record this album for X amount of dollars. And if it means I'm working 28 hours a day, you know, so be it. Um, but really overhead has a lot to do with it. Um, Harry brought up a point, hiring uh, an audio engineer, if I can kind of separate myself from the group just a little bit. Um, I've spent 45 years as a professional audio engineer, so that's part of it. Um, I also license uh, a very costly music library every month. Uh, that I use. Um, there's a huge difference between royalty-free music, MIDI, awful tracks, and real orchestrated tracks. Uh, the music accentuates and speaks to the voice talent as well as the listener. Um, I would say that that the the spectrum for others pretty normal, anywhere from 18 to to 25. Uh, I do offer good discounts for various. Um, uh, groups that people belong to, for example, and I know that, you know, Volvo does not endorse this and that's fine, but I give a, a nice substantial discount to Volvo members as well as members that have attended various popular uh, conventions around the country. And the reason being is these are the people that are doing it. These are the people that are making a commitment. They're getting on an airplane, they're booking a hotel, they're leaving work, you know, um, they're attuned to the industry. They know people. They know Eric's name. They know Dan's name, Gabby, everybody in this committee. We know who they are. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, that says a lot. And motivation uh, of the uh, talent that's doing the demo. But I, per I write all the copy, um, and I write it throughout a series of time as I get to know the uh, talent better and better. Um, I also give the entire spot, not just a line or two, to create a demo. I create full spots. And then I cut them down to create the demo. I write specifically so I can use line one, three, seven, and nine, or line one, two, three, and 12. Um, I supply the full spots, fully mixed, as well as the cut downs. I also uh, cut down the actual demo for voice exam upload. And I do a completely separate mix for a completely different type of demo that I don't really want to get into now. But certain people in certain genres require a specific sound. Um, so within my main mix, I'll create the secondary mix. So they walk away with a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and <laughs> coaching, I don't really coach, but I definitely coach for, uh, during, uh, the demo process. Yeah. And, Less direction, uh, it, you know. yeah. 
Yep. And uh, same question to you. Um, you you're coaching. What, what uh, you do demos as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. So, I so go ahead. I think I'm a hybrid of, <laughs> of a, because I'm in the LA area. Uh, number one, I hire an audio engineer to work with, and I do coaching prior to that. So I, in terms of range. 1900 to, to 3000 is I think a, a decent range for that. I, I have, when I ask the student what their goals are, usually from day one, if they have a goal to make a demo uh, in, in my specialty area, which is um, commercial and narration specifically, um, I will from day one then start kind of branding their voice and starting to pick scripts out as we go along in our sessions. So a lot of that is, is built into like Elaine's it's built in the copywriting is built into the, the coaching sessions that I have uh, prior to the demo. And then the demo is a specific uh, separate price um, after that. And a lot of times I like people to come to, to LA if they can uh, just for the experience. I, I, you know, I coach people from all over. And so it's a really cool experience to be in the studio and to produce. And I think that's always the best uh, situation. Not always possible, though. And if that's not possible, I will, you know, vet out a studio that's near them or use their home studio if it's up to par. And I always submit those samples to my audio engineer to make sure he can work with them and he approves of that. And for me, I, I tend to uh, produce more. And because a lot of times I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm going to do like a narration genre where I may have a couple more spots by the time I'm assembling it and going back and forth with the engineer. And so those spots get thrown in the mix um, because a lot of people with the narration get heard, you know, in, in different formats like voice Sam would be one of them. So you can have a little couple extra spots. Maybe there's not so much of a limit to a particular time for that. So I can say, well, here's another fully produced spot. And so that that's all built into the price. And, but a lot of my, my footwork is done in the coaching sessions prior to that. And I do know that some other coaches in this area uh, include that they're either taking a more advanced student and then they're including a few sessions to talk about okay wh where does their voice fit in what you know what would be their a good brand for their spot or, or you know um, what would be a good you know piece of copy for that voice so I know that they're including a couple of sessions in there so I think that's where a lot of the variance comes in mm -hmm. that there might be a couple of, you know I produced this demo for you know thirty five hundred dollars but included in that is four sessions or two sessions, whatever it is. I think that that's where some of the variance comes. And, and most people, I, I think I would, I would recommend that you just, you know, find that out. I mean, cause yeah. mine doesn't include that. Uh, mine is like a two hour studio session, uh, direction production and whatever time it takes for me to put that together with my engineer afterwards, that's all included in one price. Um, and it's completely separate than my coaching, which is, I don't tell you, you need five sessions. You actually have to, you know, I have to be like, okay, yeah, now you're ready. So I don't, I don't ever, people always say, well, can I just do five sessions with you? And then we can do a demo. And I'm like, no, I, I won't even commit to that. I, I really need to get to know you. We need to coach together. And then ultimately you can start there. It doesn't mean, you know, I have some students that, you know, if they're advanced starts, you know, six sessions, some students that are 36. <laughs> so really yeah. depends. So I agree with that so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think to put some sort of arbitrary number on it. Oh, five, you know, five sessions and, you know, an automatic demo. I just find that to be, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, how could, I, how could anybody know that you'd be ready mm -hmm. after five sessions? You know, to, to me, that's just, uh, it just yeah. doesn't, it's not a working for me personally, it's not a working business model. Yeah, I agree. Well, let me throw out a bomb. There is a certain outspoken talent agent <clears throat> who uh, has just publicly flat out stated it is irresponsible to bring any new people into this business given the current marketplace. Reaction. I wonder who that was. <laughs> who was that? I don't even know. <laughs> Eric Shepard. I don't know. I don't know him. Um, I, you know, my feeling on it is, is first of all, I love those videos that he's doing. Uh, and I love how just uh, straightforward Eric is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he pulls no punches. Um, and, you know, I, I think that while he certainly does mean that to a certain degree, I think that he means that in that 
you know, we know, again, like I said earlier, most people are not going to put in the time or the effort. Um, I think that if somebody shows the dedication that they actually are going to put in the time and the effort, then they have every right to be here or to certainly work towards it. Um, you know, and that's just it. Like I said, I mean, most don't. Most people that want to get into this, then it's not until they find out just how difficult it is and how many layers there are yeah. to really achieving mm -hmm. um, an effective delivery. Um, you know, they, they just don't put in the time to make that happen. Um, and most of them get scared off, which I think is a good thing. Um, you know, I'm totally fine if somebody says, you know what, this is harder than I thought. Um, I, you know, I, I guess I'm going to try something else. Great. Go. You know, go pursue a dream that you love. I mean, you have to love this. You have to love it. If I can get nothing else across to any new person that, you know, is uh, watching this, you have to love this in order to succeed at it. Um, and, uh, you know, most just won't put in that kind of time. So Eric is right in that sense uh, that, you know, anybody should, shouldn't just jump into right. this, but if you're willing to put in that time and effort um, and the training, then, then by all means. Yeah, I think he's drawing a line in the sand. He's qualifying. Yes. You know, you've got to be, got to have open eyes about this. Would you agree? Gabby? Would you agree uh, with that Gabby? No, oh, she's muted. Sorry. So I do. And I mean, here's the thing. I love Eric Shepard deeply. He's one of my agents. And Me too. I mean, I'm a, I'm a cynical bastard with the rest of them. I mean, I get it, but I also think, you know, he's coming from a slightly mean spirited place on this. <laughs> yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's very passionate about it, obviously. Um, but I also think, and it's, it's interesting because Dan, you know, I think when we talk about putting in the time and putting in the effort and everything that you just said, which makes perfect sense, we almost have to quantify it now. What does that mean? Because we came from an era when it meant being in the studio till all hours of the day and night mm -hmm. and missing our social lives. And because we were the little audio geeks, Eric, you're probably in the same boat with this. You know, we were um, up until literally, I remember being in the studios at stations until unholy hours playing with the DAWs and learning new techniques. And then um, when it came to voiceover, kind of the same thing, that 10,000 hour rule was very real for all of us. And that's not the audience that we're speaking to anymore. That's not this generation that's coming up. Everything is very instant gratification. Um, how do I get it now? And I think that even though they hear us saying you have to love it and you have to be willing to put in that time, they don't really have a frame of reference there. Well, yeah. You're absolutely right about that, Gabby. I mean, the thing is that, you know, we do, all of us here have enough years in this business that we've seen other people work. <laughs> You know, yeah. we, we have had the opportunity to watch and listen to other people work. And, you know, now everybody's just isolated. Everybody just expects to be able to do this from home. And if you don't have the frame of reference of being able to watch other people work and actually see them do it uh, on top of listening to them do it and paying attention, then it is very difficult, um, which is one reason why getting out there and networking and taking some workshops and things like that actually is important to do in the early stages just so you can get a sense of you know do I really love this am I going to be willing to put in the time and so you do get to see some other people work um, you know there's only two kinds of people that spend their entire lives in dark padded rooms talking to themselves and we are one of them <laughs> yeah, that's so, <laughs> if I can, so true <laughs> if I can just talk of, and Gabby and I in the VO Boss podcast we're always talking about like that whole other the whole other aspect of voiceover, which is the business. And so a lot of people coming into it don't realize the amount involved in really running a business or being the entrepreneur that they, that they are going to be. Um, or they're coming at it from, you know, they're in a corporate job and they don't understand what it, what it takes to, to be a voice actor or a freelance entrepreneur. And that is like, 
like Dan was saying, they don't find out until, you know, later on and they're like, and that's why I'm always trying to tell people in the beginning, it's so hard. There's not just voice. It's, you know, all many other aspects to it. And you have to be aware that this is something that will be required of you or you have the money and you pay somebody else to do that for you. Anybody else have a thought about that or? Yeah, Cliff. <laughs> well, hopefully, I'm thinking and I'm hopeful that uh, some of Eric's sentiments are we should really discourage those seeking instant gratification. Um, yeah. Those that put in the time, those that we know, and we know, we know who's studying, we know who's working, and we know who's getting on social media to say, what's the best this, what's the best that? Looking for instant gratification uh, is, is destroying or has the potential to destroy this industry because those getting instant gratification don't understand uh, exactly what they're getting, how valuable it is, how hard those of us have worked to get that information. Um, and then hopefully Eric is also maybe uh, trying to uh, talk about those seeking uh, you know, uh, instant qualification or those instant credibility. So we've got this thing going on here where people are going on social media, especially with voice acting, wanting instant answers. And we know that doesn't work. Uh, audio is years and years of, and acting is years and years and, and networking is years and years. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting on and answering and encouraging uh, this kind of instant gratification. And I think that's equally as damaging um, I'm an expert because I say you use, need to use 416. So therefore, I'm an expert. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes, 416. But we all know that every case is different. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I agree with Eric in, in saying that we got to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, we've got to give the uh, information to those that uh, deserve it, respect it. Uh, very important to respect the industry and not to say, you know what, I'm the guy that doesn't need coaching. I'm the guy that doesn't need anything. I'm going to walk right in and I'm going to kill the audition. And there's a lot of people jumping in thinking they're the exception to the rule. And you know what? Yeah. They ain't they're not the exception to the rule. Yeah. Attention spans are awful short these days. Yes, um, they are. Okay. Well, here's another question. Say, I'm sorry. I would just have to say that I've seen it over the years and it's been this, it's been like that since the beginning that I started teaching. Everyone's always wanted instant gratification. The only difference is we have more social outlets to, to show it. Exactly. So now we've the got big. them. We have it yeah. rotating around itself like a cyclone. We're all just... patient perfectionists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, here's another question for all of you. And, and that is, um, would you be willing to take payments for the services you offer? In other words, would you split it up? Would you agree to split it up into three payments or two payments? Anybody? And I usually do um, half up front and half on the days yeah. that we okay. voice. So okay. I do do that. I already do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dan? Friedman? Uh, for demos? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not for coaching. That's okay. different. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah, for, for, for coaching, it's pretty much at the time. You need to pay that. Um, and I don't necessarily do any split payments on that, but for demos, yeah. Because yeah, it's a demos, high price item. Uh, it's a high ticket item. So. For demos, I, I uh, 50 up front and then 50 upon delivery, complete delivery. But here's something else that I do is that I don't take that first 50% until we do two sessions together. We have to complete two sessions hmm. together. And then at the end of the second session, I said, Hey, am I the guy that you want to work with? Is my coach, is my directing something that works with you? Are we clicking? And, or I will say, Hey, are you really, really ready? And you know, you don't really know. You can do all kinds of investigation into somebody. You can audition them all you want, but until you get them under fire, you know, until you get them in that actual role. So after the second session, uh, we talk about it and say, is this something that you want to pursue? Not everybody does. And um, that's when I'll take, you know, the initial 50%. Mm -hmm. And then again, the, the back, but you know, I demos don't really pay my bills. So I'm, yeah. I'm a little lucky about that. Yeah. Eric, are you willing to take half and half? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I feel like that's pretty standard. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Across the board. Um, 50-50. Um, does anybody here do audiobook demos? Because it's a different animal. Um, it's usually a longer demo. Does anybody here do audiobook demos? I, I did them a long time ago, but they, I think most people want it recorded out of your own house. So okay. I just say, just go ahead and record it at your own house and send it in. Because, I, I mean, the, the, the common wisdom is a demo, a commercial demo should be one minute, no more. A, in fact, I'm not even sure most agents listen to it for a full minute. Is, is that the, uh, the still the common wisdom? <laughs> Can I make a comment about what you just said, 
Because yeah. I'm a my main job is not a coach. I'm a, I'm a promo producer, and I listen to demos. And here's the truth that matters: every demo I do is probably ninety seconds. And there and there's a myth out there that that no one's going to listen to uh, for more than fifteen seconds. They're not going to listen to more than fifteen seconds if it sucks. They're going to listen to the whole ninety seconds if it's great. So I just I, I just think that's an absolute myth about okay. uh, if I hear a good demo and the voice is good and the audio design is great. God, let it rip for two minutes. I don't care. You know. <laughs> One minute or else I was going to tune out. I just don't think the ADD is that bad in our business. Close. Okay. But it looks good to see that one minute, you know, uh, timestamp on the MP3. It looks professional. looks nice. 1.000. But now with the advent of uh, voice amp that doesn't have a timer on it, you really don't know how long a demo is. Plus, it's so easy to jump around. Yeah, you know, not everybody uses voice multiple amp Multiple demos, especially commercial demos. I'm not only listening to the overall picture, but I'm listening to specific characters, specific personalities uh, that somebody would have in their demo. So I may say, yeah, that's great. Click up. Oh, that's great. That's not the voice. That's not the, oh, that's the voice. So voice am I think is terrific. Uh, as far as someone like me, a, a buyer of voice talent that I can move around really, really quick. And I am not thinking, Oh my God, this is a minute 20 or, how long is this one going to go until I get to the good one? It's like finding a patch on a synthesizer. You know, next one, next one, next one. Oh, that one's beautiful. So um, voice think, really helps quite a bit. I think you lose something when you cut off tags for, and for what I do, which is promo. Because a big part of our business is, you know, all new this Thursday at 9, 8 central. I need to hear that, you know. And if we start cutting off every tag, every title, every top, it just, it's just not going to be real. It's not going to feel like a genuine promo like this guy got hired to do this job that's what a demo should sound like he got hired and if you and if you, start, if you start eliminating stuff to make it a minute i think it hurts the demo that not commercial i'm speaking strictly promo I, I think that, yeah, uh, i'm just gonna say I, I consider who's listening to the demo i mean if you're you know if you're going to be you know uh, hunting for an agent that is you know you're going to submit your commercial demo and and you know that agent wants it to be a minute or less than you know it should be you, you can give that to them but I think you can have maybe uh, different versions of your demo for narration you know obviously a minute isn't it doesn't you know I'm, I'm longer than a minute and I think that my the person that might listen to my corporate narration demo um, is not going to be necessarily an agent it might be somebody who found me online and that is a huge difference in terms of length and, and like Harry said if it's a great demo then they're gonna listen you know after the first 10 seconds and what I do like and I you know I like voice in but uh, any type of a of a player that will separate the spots out not just for listening but if you have like if you have like tagged like this is my uh, this is my uh, my aerospace Boeing spot, or this is whatever type of spot it is. If there's a visual cue to that, that can also help people who are trying to get to your voice quickly and say, oh, there, I'm in the aerospace and I need this spot, or I would like this fast food spot, you know, because that's my business and that's what I'm looking for. So I think that that's right. helpful to have a, a, a player or, or presented on your site in, in segments so that people can visually see it first and then click the one they want to hear. And I think that's just the quicker they can get to the buy button, the better off you are. But yeah. the, different, the different industries are absolutely yeah. paramount here. I mean, yeah. because I, I, what both of you are saying, like what Harry's talking about, promo buyers are so particular and it is all about authenticity and it's all about having something that absolutely matches and exceeds that expectation of what they do every day and what they hear every day. So yeah, for them, they're going to keep going in that demo. It may be in the first 15, 20 seconds, they're going, am I interested? And then it's listening further to really make sure you're hitting all of those markers of what they need and what they require from you. Mm. But you know, after 11 plus years in casting, I mean, I can tell you that you know, commercial 15 seconds, whether we love you or hate you, we're done. We're making a decision. You know, that's it. It's either yes or no. <laughs> I, I think there's a big difference too in like a 90 second demo where, where each cut is like, you know, 23 seconds long. You lost me at like, you know, 12 yeah. seconds. You know, like I, I'm not going to sit through your first commercial cut that's 20 seconds. Uh, there's there's just no way. I, mm -hmm. I want to hear ADD kicks in real quick. So I want to mm -hmm. hear, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's the – younger demographic of myself but you know i, I want to hear that next cut pretty early in on the demo are you talking about commercial or promo eric uh commercial okay 
I think one other big misconception is, you know, uh, the talent have is, you know, they think the demo is for them. <laughs> and it is not. Mm -hmm. It is not right. for you as a talent. It's not really right. for you. It, it It's really about you for the listener. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, because it's like a resume, you know, um, and you don't go looking at your own resume and uh, uh, enjoying yourself, right? Um, <laughs> that sounded horrible. Um, no, <laughs> but really, you know, the, the, it's really for the listener. Um, yeah. So all you really need to tailor it to the listener. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to be respectful of the time here. A couple of you have to leave right away at the top of the hour. What am I missing? What questions have I not asked about the demo process or demo pricing that you think we've missed so far today? Anybody? I'd like to throw out a suggestion. And sure. I don't know how everybody here will feel about it, but I do know that when I did my last commercial demo, um, although I mixed it myself, um, I actually did not go to one coach to do the whole thing and direct me on it. I actually chose five different people very specifically. Um, besides the besides the fact that I added some of my own spots that you know were actual work that I did, um, I went to five different directors and I said, hey, I want you to direct me for this reason on this spot or whatever, or throw me a script and you know that you would like to hear me on. Um, and Cliff, I, weren't we just talking about this? We were. Yeah, we were <laughs> done by six, four years I mean, ago. That, I, well, we had that. We had that idea, and it you know it didn't quite yeah. uh, materialize in that way. But really, like, that's really the best way to to, in my opinion. It, I think uh, that that you're always going to be working with different directors anyway. Yeah. So why would you just have one person do your demo, uh, the whole thing, when you can choose, you know, any, you could choose everybody here, uh, you know, all one, two, three, four, five, six, all seven of us, Dave, you're not doing demos. So, but you could choose all, the seven of the rest of us each to direct one spot. Uh, and then you'd have a full demo ready to go each with somebody else's different mm -hmm. flavor, um, which is how your life and career is going to go anyway. And um, so. I think right along with that and so important is the fact that you can change it up any yeah. time you want. And isn't that what we all do right. to our own demos? I'm constantly moving things around. I'm constantly tweaking and making changes because the, that investment, that initial gigantic demo investment can be so cost prohibitive for people that then they're stuck in the confines of that for a really long time till they can recoup or you know, whatever their case might be. Mm -hmm. The way Dan's talking about, I think, yes, it's more true to life. It's more true to what we see in this industry and it enables flexibility of the demo. Yeah, no, and you don't have to be tied to the order or any of those things. I mean, it can be moved around. Um, and the other thing, too, is, you know, the perspective of time uh, will make you want to change things up because you'll hear it six months later. I mean, believe it or not, there are times where I do not listen to my own demos. Imagine that. I don't listen to them for a long time because, I, you know, I, you forget about it or you just it's for other people. Right. It's not for me. So you know, six months later, I might just pop it up and see how it's comparing to something else that I did. And I'll say, oh, maybe I ought to change the order of that now. Back then, I liked it for what it was, but now maybe I like it uh, for something different or I like, I'm hearing something different now. So that's, you know, something that you can consider to it. You don't have to be married to the uh, whole order or any of it, really. Mm -hmm. um, you can change a lot of things easily. I now, often do. Uh... With razor blades. <laughs> I often do, uh, when I do a demo, I'll do maybe one or two extra spots and I'll say, pick, pick the ones and, and hopefully it'll break our hearts, which one's not going to make it onto the demo. And I'll have two left over. And then in six months, mm -hmm. we can throw it in because it's basically just, you know, it's shuffleboard. Mm -hmm. once, once the art is done, the rest of it basically becomes uh, playing I, shuffleboard. I I'd actually like to ask, uh, if unless there's somebody else that wants to contribute to that part of the conversation, that there's a new trend in advertising, right? Because we all have ADD and, and there's just so much being thrown. And that is the shorter spot, uh, commercially anyways, like the bumper spot, the six second spot. What do you guys think about all of all of that? And if it, it, will it affect demos in the future? Absolutely. I personally oh. don't think a vignette should be longer than seven to 10 seconds anyway, personally. Yeah. Yeah, it's about showing different different styles. And one thing I just try to stay away from it is an awareness campaign. So if it says new, because within six months, it's not new. So it's right. going to really date it. So anything that has a new, 
I, I just say, well, let's find something that's going to be the next thing rather than the beyond that new thing. What can we come up with? Just make sure you, you record improved after it so you can just get yeah. dropping and improved and every, new and improved, new and improved. New, improved and new free, and the three most improved. important words in advertising. Yes, <laughs> approved. Limited time. That's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, any final thoughts, anyone? Uh, open? Just, some, some, just do your research. You know, like there are your people who charge thousands and thousands of dollars that, it does, you know, just because they charge that much money doesn't mean they come to our weekend workshop. We'll coach you. We'll demo you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you got to break that person's heart and tell them that you just spent three grand and this is not a competitive demo at all. Yeah. Like not even close. Just, you know, I feel like referral for me is the, is the, you know, people throw names around. Like if you have VO people, VO buddies, talk to them, talk, network. Yep. I mean, that's, that's really how names get spread around. And, and if you don't have VO buddies, for goodness sakes, make some. Right. Yeah. <laughs> get on a plane. Also, you know? websites, I always steer people to my website to hear what I've done with other people. That way it's of course. no mystery. Yeah. You know, I'd like to take the mystery out of it. It's a lot of money, and I realize it, but you know what? It's so much better to spend the extra money, have it done right, than have your cousin go buy a mic at Radio Shack and plug it into his garage bed on his Apple computer, and says, you know, and all of a sudden it's just a train wreck. So yeah, there should be a reputation trail, either on the web or through word of mouth or referrals. There should always be that, and it should always be great. Yeah, Google yeah. is your friend, and like the internet is your friend, really. If if research, research demo producers, research, you know, mm -hmm. and talk to other people. And, yeah. and the other thing too is, you know, I, I, if a student comes to me or somebody comes to me wanting to make a demo and I feel that it's not, you know, the chemistry isn't there or it's not a good fit, I am more than happy to recommend a half a dozen or a dozen other people. You know, I have no problem if it's just not clicking between me and that person to say, hey, you know what, you should go work with Cliff or you should work with Harry or you should work with Eric or you know, anybody here or other people too. Um, and that is, uh, we owe it to the business to sh spread the wealth with the people that we, uh, you know, like and want to work with, um, because being somebody, uh, you know, that is honest and, uh, is likable and these are all key components to being successful in this business too. And that holds true for coaching as well. Yes. I, feel. Mm -hmm. I always tell Absolutely. people, take a, a handful of people and call them on the phone. Don't email them. You can't, you can't get a vibe for someone o over yeah. an email. You need to so be on true. The phone with them. See if you connect with them. If you're not feeling them, it's probably not the best. Uh, it's not going to be a good, good relationship moving forward. I mean, yep. so. exactly. Well, folks, I just can't tell you how, um, this has just been great. Uh, it's been so educational. Thank you all. I want to start with Anne for being my co-host and, and a participant in this one. Uh, Eric, you were great for joining us at the last minute and you added so much to this. Uh, Dan and Gabrielle, Harry, Elaine, Cliff, you, you all are just so astute in your knowledge and I, I just thank you for sharing it today. Uh, this will go out uh, to all of our Volvo members and to the VO community at large. I encourage you to spread it around all you need to and uh, Anna, do you have a final comment? I just want to say thanks so much, guys. I know we're all like super busy and it really means a lot for you guys to, to take uh, time out to share your wonderful wisdom with everyone. It's just a great community resource. So thanks. Thanks so much. I think we all agree this is pretty important stuff. You know, <laughs> and it's great to see all of you. I know. Yeah. Yay. Great circle. Hey, guys. Okay. Yeah. Thanks and goodbye.